샬롬. 저는 경기도 안성에서 엘림 외국인 선교회를 섬기고 있는 유은경 목사입니다. 이 시간에는 레위기에 있는 말씀을 중심으로 우리의 희년이신 예수 그리스라는 도 제목으로 말씀을 잠시 전하겠습니다. 특히 온 열방에 복음이 전파되어야 하기 때문에 영어로 말씀을 전하겠습니다. God gave his chosen people seven feasts so that they may celebrate and give thanksgiving him through these feasts. As they keep these feasts, they can please God and have a better intimacy with him. Then they can live a prosperous and a blessed life by God's grace. Number one, Passover. It was the journey of Jesus the Messiah. This Passover signifies that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Redeemer. Jesus Christ laid his life up as a lamb Passover of God. Passover means pass over something. God could pass over the bar of sinners because Jesus Christ laid his life to bear the sins of the world. This is also our experience when we were saved through the precious blood of Jesus who died on the cross early. The death of Christ ended the sentence of death on the children of Adam as the Lamb of God. The next day John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father. Having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them to the end. Passover was the beginning of the exodus for the Jews to promised land, and it was also the exodus of Jesus from earth. Number two, the feast of unleavened bread. It symbolized crucifixion of Christ Jesus and Exodus. In the Passover ceremony, God removed the sins and the penalty of sin from the land. The death of Jesus Christ during Passover fulfilled the event that this festival symbolized for hundreds of years. This feast of unleavened bread signifies sin is Jesus who didn't know sin. Our Lord Christ Jesus is the unleavened bread, that is, he had no sin, and he didn't know sin. The reason that the Feast of Unleavened Bread kept going for seven days is an example for the course of Christians' whole life. We are able to live a holy life by maintaining and keeping through our Lord Jesus Christ. Number three, the feast of weeks barely harvest, feast of first fruit. It means resurrection of the believers in Christ Jesus. This feast signifies Christ as the first fruit in the resurrection. Christ died and rose again in so the day. The very day Christ rose again from the dead was the feast of first fruit harvest. Risen Christ is now indwelling in us. Jesus Christ is living in our spirit as a life-giving spirit for our daily joy and contentment. His harvest was gathered at this time. It is a first fruit from the dead earth. It is the resurrection of Jesus with others. 
The resurrection of Christ is the first fruit of the dead. And he presents himself to the Father as the perfect sacrifice. Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, 23, is playing in this event. Number four, the feast of Pentecostal, feast of seven, seven grain harvest. The Holy Spirit poured out on the disciples of 120 at the fifth day from the resurrection of Christ. And the result of this, the body of Christ appeared. It marked the giving of the Holy Spirit to the church on the day of Pentecost to write the law on the flesh in our hearts. Pentecost is the fulfillment of a promise to give us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. After the Pentecostal, the bodies of all Christians became body temple that the Holy Spirit indwells. Accordingly, whenever and wherever Christian can worship God, because his spirit and the spirit of Christ were mingled each other. Therefore, in a word, the body of Christian becomes working temples. So every Christian has a divine purpose of life that whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Number five, feast of trumpet. This feast signifies that God called his scattered people and gathered from other places. God will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other. This feast will accomplish when the scattered Jewish people hear the voice of trumpet and their ancestors will come back their own end and repent their sin. Therefore, this feast will complete actual in the land of Israel in the near future. This is the anniversary of the creation of the world. The day of living things a judge's judgment begins. Now start Christ begins to reign. God is crowned king judgment. Number six, day of atonement. This feast will accomplish when Jesus comes down from the air in the near future. Jews repent and learn to come back to the Lord God and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. I will pour out on the house of David and inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me the one day they pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourn for an only child and grieve bitterly for him as one grieved for a firstborn son. Spiritually, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, this will be applied. Literally, in the near future, this will be accomplished to the Jews. Number seven, Feast of Tabernacle. It means the journey of God the Father. This feast symbolized millennium of the future that the people that God called and elected people by total grace of God enjoy together. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehead or their hand. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. He celebrated the time 
when Israel lived with God. Each of the other took twist and with a promise of tabernacles, the first curve of Passover, which is God's promise to take us is a prayer for the fruit of the vine when we'll be taken at the second coming harvest. The people of God will enjoy this feast of tabernacle as holy and kingly priest. For a thousand years, they will come true on the earth in the near future. Therefore, we should work with him and worship him under the divine light as we act properly according to the gospel. The year of Jubilee symbolized that Jesus provided us full abundant rest. Jesus said that, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. In the year of Jubilee of the New Testament, it means they returned their lost heritage and home. It means also now Israelites became poor and lost their land of Canaan. But when the Lord comes again, the kingdom of a millennium will the year of jubilee to them. It means also every Christian enjoy and true rest and peace in Christ. The Son of a Man, Jesus, is the Lord of rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God give you rest and peace of mind. Amen.